Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang today. Very good to see so many people still here in the hot sun time. Very good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Can I see you? Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. Um, I didn't speak to you in satsang for a very long time. Mm. Um, but I want to tell you that in my heart we are conversing all the time. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm praying to you, I'm talking to you all the time and you are responding to me. It's so clear. Yeah. Um, but I'm also aware that there's something that really doesn't want to be standing here. So that's why I'm, I'm here today. Yes, let's admit it. <laughs> because there will always be something we may say, I'm shy, or something much more strong than just shyness. It could be something, uh, some energy, some force, that is directly resistant, uh, as though it doesn't want you to, to be standing here, Finding out more. It may take the form of shyness, yeah, I'm a bit shy, but it's not just shy. You see? As you are growing to recognize the importance of being free from this influence, you will not pay attention to shyness. You'll come, you say something, there's, I don't know what it is, beside of it. I don't know if it's a voice or an energy or a spirit or a belief, but it, I, it, it causes me to be frozen, and I can't. Many people have come like that. They say, like, sometimes I want to come, and something, I can't. I look at out there, and I see <laughs> this kind of constipated look. I say, oh my God, okay, that's fine. What to do? How important is that? How important is that voice? And we are calling voice now, we say. Something even may say, don't go there. If you go, you're going to look foolish. You're going to become uh, uh, make a fool of yourself or something or or whatever other thing it may say. But it didn't stop you today. It didn't stop you today. Today you stood up and said, oh, I come now. Why it did not stop you today? Now you are here, no? Remind me, because you say it's quite some time since you spoke with me. Remind me again, what is the most important thing for you? <laughs> it's a uh, freedom. To wake up to, to who I, I truly am. Yes. And it is it is unfolding, it's happening, it's it's taking place. Yeah. And more and more peace, more and more joy mm-hmm. is, is being revealed here. And yeah, it's a slow and, and soft and beautiful unfolding. It is. One thing though that I, I would like to expose is and I know you answered it in the in the first question. Um, so it's the a lot of restlessness, a lot of um, distraction of the of the mind, a lot of thinking still taking place, and I'm aware because I I see often that I am I'm the awareness in which the thoughts are are just playing around. But if I see that five percent of the day, ninety-five percent of my of my waking hours, I'm still involved, dis- distracted. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how how much, but but yeah. it's yeah. it's just glimpses, and it's like a remembering. No, it's like ah, yeah, it's like dismounting, as you said. It's like dismounting from the mm, mm, from thinking, mm. but it's still. So you say if it is. Five percent, five percent out of one hundred percent, you know you are totally firm in your knowing, but I'm just the awareness 
inside this awareness is this dance of life. And in the dance of life, I appear in my world as the one who is moving through life on the journey towards awakening. And from 5%, I can see this is so. I am the awareness itself. But maybe for 95% of the time, this thought activity, I am caught in it. When you are caught in the activity of personhood, hmm, in those times, are you aware that uh, this is just a play, or what does it feel? How is it for you? Hmm? Well, sometimes I become aware, hmm. and then I'm in, then I'm. It's like this remembering again. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just here, you know. I'm just, hmm. I'm just here. But then, after a little while, it it goes again. Yes. If I were to say, mm, the attention is going with the mind, the attention goes to the mind activity, and that is registering as your experience. This is what's happening, you know. So my waking state seems like it belongs to my mind. The mind is the ruler of the waking state. You know, I'm doing this with so all activities is mind. So how much peace you are going to have? Because first there must be a discernment, the difference between the mind and yourself. Is the mind yourself? This must become clear. If the mind is not myself, why should it take up so much space of my life? Because what is my life? Well, mostly your waking state. That's what when you're asleep, you have no history. So we don't include nobody writing autobiography includes sleep. Nothing is going on. Okay? So effectively our life is the registration of what happens in our waking state. And if the waking state is predominantly spent in thought, are you happy about it? You see? And then is it your wish? Is it a happy life? Once upon a time, you did not know there was any different. Your mind, yourself, same thing, nobody, we just move with that. Then you came to satsang. What brought you to satsang? What brought you to satsang? Something took you to satsang. Why to come to satsang? Why not just stay like many people? You get on and your mind tells you what to do, where to go, when is the right time, who to, what do you think about? Like this. Why did you come to satsang? What brought you here? It's not your mind. So, what brought you here then, you see? Is it still um, uh, supporting you? Who are you? Something brought you to satsang to find out who you are. Because until now, you don't know. We don't know who we are. We accept we are only our conditioning, and I am this body. It is enough to have a life in this world. You know, I am John Brown. This is, uh, you know, Anna Pink, or whatever. And uh, that's life. That's what we know. But for some beings, it's not enough. Something brought them here. Sometimes great trouble and pain and frustration force them to be looking elsewhere than the common everyday experiences. For some people, I am not judging the world, I am just saying, what brought you here? And for what reason? It must be for some good reason to wake up to a deeper recognition, a deeper experience uh, of what is real for you. And you began to discover this when you were shown how to observe with detachment. The more you can simply, you 
in the past, you feel as soon as something comes, like a reflex, you are in it. And now you learn to observe, and gradually, with the, with the power of observing, even the most terrible states, you come to see, but even here, I am still not this. The mind throws even more strong experiences, or tsunami experiences, and still, from the place of the detached weakness, the weakness is saying, it still doesn't touch me. Why is this, you see? Have you come to that experience yet, you see? And if you have come to that, then already your energy must be somehow deepening in this new discovery. It should not be just 5%. Of 5% is better than 1%. Of course. But if your days are nice and soft and so on, maybe we need a little bit of uh, some explosions. Can, because can I, they huh? Can I just add something that yes. that came to me now? Maybe the five percent are consciously in that, but I think also unconsciously I am resting in it where there's no thought activity, but consciously where I'm like stopping and realizing, oh the thoughts and the thoughts can go on also. But they're they're going on in, in that in that greater awareness. Yes. Yeah. The only thing that really needs to change is your perception. You don't have to go and change yourself and do a lot of spiritual gymnastics. And no, you only need a change in understanding. That is already good news. Because if you had to correct all the things that we do wrong, who would stand a chance? No? So thank you, Grace. And we don't. You only have to recognize what you are. Presently, we believe we are our conditioned identity. This you are not. Not absolutely. Relatively, it appears like that, but absolutely it is not true. Satsang is the place that you make this discovery in a very profound way, to the extent that the natural joy of knowing who you are is released from the mind. Mind is given in its this mind in its psychological portrayal, not the mind in its cosmic significance. Because mind is also how you come to recognize something is beautiful, your family, love, all this is mind also. But I'm talking about mind in the connection with identity. It does not work. Mind, in its psychological aspect, is secondary for you. You are primary. You are the original one. Mind came later in that play. You must find your original being. Because it doesn't matter what has happened to you, your original nature is always perfect. You must find it. Not make it. You cannot make it. You cannot make what is perfect more perfect. You can only discover. And part of the discovering is recognizing what you are not. Which very often we have been thinking, this I am, now you will come to see this I am not. Not just by belief, but by wisdom, by observing, you'll come to see that. So that must change, and it will change. And I'm happy you brought it up, because I'm going to put a bit more attention with you. <laughs> because when I hear, ah, oh, what? Okay, good. We have to look, because you are totally perfect in your natural state, but some distractedness come. And just through habit also, we accept it. And then you can, of course, have a life. With the mind, you have a life. But it's not the greatest life. It's like one star consciousness. <laughs> you can have ten star consciousness, 
Why one star consciousness? One star consciousness means uh, living life, the life where there is personal identity at the heart of it. So this is uh, not the fullness of yourself. And if you stay here and you say, you know, no, I'm seeing that no, it's not enough. It's not enough that my days are nice. They have to be free. Nice is not enough here. Okay is not enough here. Being a survivor is not enough here. Having a great time is not enough here. Free, I mean. But it means free. And I have seen uh, how much in your life those changes have come. Much more beautiful. One time, uh, resistance. Remember one time she went on holiday, she came back, she couldn't. Mm. She was. You know, I said, Oh my gosh, what is this now? You see? But gradually something uh, relaxed, and she found uh, her truth, she's finding something relaxed. Then you can see, you see, even without speaking, you can feel the vibration has become more harmonious, she's more peaceful, so gracious. But not enough for me. You see? Because when you say, I came for freedom, that means something for me. So I can say, very nice, but come, come, come. And not enough. Yeah. So am I being unreasonable to speak like that? No. Thank you. Okay. So we will look more into this one. Okay, you come and then you tell, tell me something. Thank you. Thank you. There is nothing left to protect, nothing left to be or to become. And there's no holding on to anything at all. No, no self-image that uh, is to improve or to be in any way. Anything to fix? No. Nothing to fix, nothing to, to destroy or to heal okay. or to... Yeah, yeah. A rare one. Nothing to desire or to want. Even though it's hard to say that there's nothing to desire, because there's still a bit of, of a sense of desiring to be... You determine how important that is. For you, you determine how important that is. Yeah, desire will play. You, this is a living body. It will happen, it will come, it will visit you. Anything today, madam? There's something nice for you here? Uh, you don't need to mention that even. It's up to you. You are in charge. So if your words are true, then you must be sublimely happy. Actually, the desire that I wanted to say is that that of being completely absorbed in in in, in this light. That's the desire that is is, is still it's yeah. it's alive. Uh, drop the word completely. If you say I want to be one hundred percent established <laughs> in this muji, the mind will allow you to be ninety nine percent. But that missing one percent will give you a whole heap of trouble, and it is only concept. Yeah, you are. 
you're as much absorbed, you know, as you are, whatever that is. Your attitude is leave nothing not absorbed. You see? But if you say, I want to be a hundred completely absorbed, in a dynamic world, there's no such thing. Just keep looking and confirming. No, it is not those things. The mind comes, Oh, I've got a very good offer for you today. And he knows what to bring. Behold. There you go. Mm -mm. When you see the mind cannot bring anything to improve on what you are naturally. Then this, this play, you have transcended. But don't say, I have transcended. Keep quiet. Make no claims. Don't be in a hurry to formulate any premature conclusions about anything. You don't need to. There is no one to impress. You just quietly see. When you search for an I identity and its location, you keep finding nowhere and everywhereness. Not much to speak about. Nowhere to go, everywhere you are. Yes, some superficial desires they come. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Life. Hmm? You are not told to suppress your senses. Ah, oh, no, no. Don't feel. Don't. Mm, mm, mm. No, no. Don't be a puritan. Don't be a rascal either. But I, I warn you against the puritanical idea. Simply be, remain as you are. That's all. You may find you don't have anything more to say, you can't say anything. But people coming to you, oh, thank you, sister, thank you, thank you so much. What for? Thank you. Just uh, you exist, and your existence causes peace to me. But if nobody comes at all to you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if they look at you and went, <laughs> it matters nothing for you. Very good. I just want to say how grateful and how beautiful to 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 move with you and to be here and to have this prayer alive inside of 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 being here and honoring this. Yes. Yes, the joy of honoring this. The spaciousness, the freedom, the love of honouring that. We are free to be free, and you are free to be bound. You choose. Don't let your mind choose. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, very good. Come. I thank you. I can't hide anymore, and it's just that my mind wants to hide, but 
I want to believe and to step in faith. I have been following you for a year and it's just, there's nothing left for me. And this is, it's only that. I can't, I can't express. I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time. It's just, I just can't. You are not wasting my time. <laughs> I don't think you're wasting your time at all. Thank you. Something fights to hold you into limitation. And a greater thing allows you that experience, but it won't be long now. Okay. I don't know if you actually called on me, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> um, in dreams, I always let the other person go before me, and I miss my chance. So I decided even if you didn't call on me, I'd stand up. I started praying recently, and that's new for me because this life has not been taught how to be devotional in that way. So I pray every day um, that my heart opens fully to what you're speaking and saying so that I may grasp it. And I almost left yesterday, and um, there was such a strong prayer in my heart, and it was very strong in the Christ Chapel. And, and I said, "I want to know, I want to know you. I want, to, I want to know you, you, like you." As what? Me, God, I guess. Mm -hmm. You is not Muji, but you is what this heart knows you to be. What makes you think you don't know me? <laughs> um. The reason why your mind is saying, I want to know you, is that if you believe you want to know me, you become separate from me. Yes. Yes. And it put some bridge, I want to know and to reach, but you cannot reach that which is inseparable from you. So it's just a thought. I don't want to be very flimsy about it and so dismissive. I want that you give a little space to try and understand what I've just said now. Okay. Um, before we say, oh, it's just a thought, no? Because yes. even this prayer was an approach to, to discover something. I just tried to make it more direct for you. Okay. What you are searching for is already the thing you can never not be, which is more real than the one seeking. Is that too complicated? It's no. not easy to understand because, and why not easy? Because of the the culture hmm, of our habits 
a way of looking. The, we, are, we assume that we are the person we have been conditioned to believe we are. And that person is very restricted, even in its way of perceiving. It's very moves in grooves. Whereas in your natural state, in every direction you are. And it becomes easy, you see. So when I say this to you, you know, yes, it is the mind. And for a time we must work with the mind. With the you may call the sattvic mind, the purer quality of the mind. Then you must learn to discern the difference between the higher mind than the carnal mind. The carnal mind means the mind that is much more attached with ego, with desire and fear and rejection and attachment and neediness and judgments and all of these things. So if your prayer is, please help me to come to the full realization of that which is true yes. in me, then this is good prayer. Yes. Please help me to come home to the fullness of the truth that I have read, and also Muji is pointing to that, that it is here. If this is true, help me to become free of my doubts that it is distant from me. Yes. <laughs> hmm? There is a story in the Bible, I told it, and it was that somebody approached Jesus and said, it was something like this, Master, my servant is sick and dying. If you can help, could you help me to help him? And then the Master said, If? He said, All things are possible for the one who believes. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to what the man answered now. The man said, Sir, I do believe. Help me to overcome my disbelief. Isn't that amazing? I do believe means with all my heart I, I stand in your word. But in my human nature, I am very weak. So help me in the place where I hesitate and doubt. Help me to overcome this one. Because of that openness, that honesty, Jesus said, Go. This one is healed. You see? That's been my prayer too. Help me to overcome my disbelief. Help me to overcome false identity. Yes. Which causes disbelief. Yes. Help me to overcome the wrong identity, which is the root of all this trouble. That is going to the very uh, source of it. Yes. I do have to report that ever since praying, more has fallen away yes. than with just inquiry and mind searching. And um, I never could have imagined that it would be like that. Yes. God, through grace, will answer your prayer to make you strong enough to inquire. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. <coughs> the inquiry helps you to discover through the subtleties, the subtle ways of the mind, and brings you home to the very heart of being. A 
ultimately you should not be left in a situation of duality. I met God in 1987 in such a real way, and for six years I walked with God in this way. But the same God brought me to India to meet Papaji also, because I needed that, uh, a voice that could help to guide me uh, into the very heart of uh, the, the Truth itself beyond belief, into the actuality of the real. The imperishable, the unborn, the uncreated, the limitless one, the timeless, the ever-perfect, the uncreated. Whatever you perceive and whatever you conceive, whatever you aspire for, whatever you take yourself to be, all these are unstable. They are like clouds passing in front of the infinite and unchanging sky. You are more like the sky than you are like cloud. Mind is like cloud. But the heart is like the infinite sky. This is not just something for you to believe, but for you to recognize. It's like you have to become yourself. A strange thing to say. It is like we are becoming what we are. What a paradox! The power of these sharings is not so much to teach you, but to transmit and to make you empty. And to experience the immensity and the boundlessness of the Self. He has no technique. He needs no knowledge. Being the ever-perfect, and the one without a second, the unshared reality, nothing is needed. Yet everything appears, and through the senses and the mind, we can experience and taste the flavor of the manifest world. But you are to know that without you, it does not exist. Now that's a big thing to hear, but it's a very natural thing to prove. The world is not what you think it is, but the world becomes for you what you think it is.
When you want nothing and hold no identity, you are home. Now, that may seem to be a very um, sad prospect or place. And for this reason, many times we resist the implication and the power of those words. And yet, only here are you everlastingly happy. Things cannot make you happy. But you can be happy with things. Happiness begins with you, not with things. We make many wrong decisions, but they are part of the way in which we grow, that we learn and we make mistakes and we grow from them. When you come to that place of that ultimate silence, that stillness, this incomparable one, you will spontaneously know. You will be spontaneously happy. Happy without reason. Inescapably happy and peaceful. But because you are a sentient being, we are sentient beings, we will experience from time to time movements in the mind. And they will create that kind of turbulence, you may say, and that calls you to again um, make use of your discerning power. And we need to exercise the ability to discern in order to sharpen your dharma eye, so that your seeing is true. Mm. Okay. You are here now. If I say I am not going to take any more questions, and yet at the same time I am not asking you to wait, can you be here? Don't touch the idea of next. OK, so what now? What is next? Don't touch next, and don't be waiting. You already are resting effortlessly in your effortless being. It is good like that. From here is the best place to observe the natural unfolding of the universal play. But greater than that is the natural awareness, the space in which even the cosmic harmonious expression of consciousness, hmm? consciousness dancing in that which is not dancing. That is the secret. And they are one. Not that they are the same, but they are one. One is the dance of time and change, appearing in the infinity of the unchanging. The source, the womb of the dynamic world. You don't have to study this and learn it. I already point you and give you the key to this understanding. The understanding will awaken spontaneously. It is not the most important right now. What is important is to recognize your true place.
first as the weakness of all that is appearing in you. And then that recognition in which even the weakness and the weaknessing is are themselves perceived. A rare painting. And I'm here with you until that becomes clear enough that you are not struggling with your mind. Okay. Thank you for today, everyone. Good, 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 good.